الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وسلم تسليما كثيرا ما بعد All oh, praise due to Allah We praise Him abundantly the way He deserves to be praised We ask Allah to exalt the mansion, grant peace and send His blessings and salutations upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Ahlan wa sahlan brothers and sisters Sorry for having the mic muted in the first few seconds um, Needless to say it's been a long time when you actually miss a week, it feels like you've missed a year. And um, it feels like something is missing in my life when we don't have these classes. I hope you have the same sort of uh, sentiments and anticipation. And we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make those lessons uh, a source of guidance and, uh, guidance and benefit for us in this dunya. And then more importantly, in the akhirah. And to make them as an evidence for us and not evidence against us. And to make us among those who listen to the reminder and follow the best of it. So um, as we promised, we will be resuming our uh, tafsir of Surah An-Naml. And we are at ayah number 41 specifically. Um, Musab, are you ready to recite or should I just do it on your behalf? You ready? MashaAllah. Ayah number 41, please. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم قال نكروا لها عرشها ننظر أتهدي أم تكون من الذين لا يهتدون قال نكروا لها عرشها ننظر أتهدي أم تكون من الذين لا يهتدون فلما جاءت قيل أهكذا عرشك قالت كأنه هو وأوتينا العلم من قبلها وكنا مسلمين وصدها ما كانت تعبد من دون الله إنها كانت من قوم كافرين قيل له قيل له قيل له دخل الصرح فلم قيل لها دخل الصرح فلما رأته حسبته لجة وكشفت عن ساقيها قال إنه صرح ممرد من قوارير قالت رب إني ظلمت نفسي وأسلمت مع سليمان لله رب العالمين Okay, so the English equivalent more or less would be Then Solomon said disguise, disguise her throne for her so we may see whether she will recognize it or she will not be able to. So when she arrived, it was said to her, is your throne like this? She replied, it looks to be the same. We have already received knowledge of Solomon's prophethood before this miracle and have submitted to Allah. But she had been hindered by what she used to worship instead of Allah. For she was indeed from a disbelieving people. Then she was told, enter the palace. But when she saw the hall, she thought it was a body of water. So she bared her legs. Solomon said, it is just a palace paved with crystal. At last, she declared, my Lord, I have certainly wronged my soul. Now I fully submit myself along with Solomon to Allah, the Lord of the worlds. Mumtaz. So what does the Shaykh Rahimahullah say in commenting on this particular ayah? ثم قال لمن عنده نكر لها عرشا أي غيره بزيادة ونقص. So he said to those who were with him uh, to you know change. Uh, how did they? What is the term they use? Disguise her throne. The Shaykh said by adding or emitting something, by adding something to the throne or taking something away from the throne. وَنَحْنُ فِي ذَلِكَ And while doing so, نَنْظُرْ مُخْتَبِرِينَ لِعَقْلِ We will be testing her intelligence. أَتَهْتَدِي Will she be guided? لِلصَّوَابِ وَيَكُونُ عِنْدَهَا ذَكَاءٌ وَفِطْنَةٌ طَلِيقُ بِمُلْكِهَا Will she be uh, will she be guided to the correct path? And will she have the right intelligence and wisdom that is befitting her kingdom? أَمْ تَكُونُ مِنَ الَّذِينَ لَا يَهْتَدُونَ Or will she be among those who will not be able to be guided? فلما جاءت قادمة على سليمان when she came then to سليمان عرض عليها عرشها her أو عرض عليها عرشها he presented her uh, 
her throne to her. Now, how will you know, my brothers and sisters, from a grammatical point of view, if it is عَرَضَ عَلَيْهَا عَرْشَهَا or عُرِضَ عَلَيْهَا عَرْشُهَا huh? This is very particular and the language is so important. The, the giveaway is in the fatha on the sheen. You see, uh, because عُرِضَ meaning it was, it was proposed, it was presented. And Arada meaning he proposed or he presented. So it could be that it's Mabni Lil Majhul, it's it's uh, basically being attributed to an unknown entity. When you say I was offered a cup of coffee, who offered the cup of coffee? I did not highlight. Or I said he offered me a cup of coffee, or Ahmed offered me a cup of coffee. What's the difference between them? In both cases, I was offered a cup of coffee. However, in one I, know, I don't know who the offerer is. And in the other one, I know that it's Ahmed. So usually when it's uh, na'ib fa'il, when it's na'ib fa'il, يعني مبني للمجهول, meaning عرضة, it was, it was presented, then the word, the, the na'ib fa'il will come with a dhamma because it's always marfu' So it'll be عرضة عليها عرشها. So from the dhamma, we will know that it is عرضة. But because it is maf'ul bihi here, it is the object of the sentence, therefore it is mansubu the fatha, we know that the, the verb is arada, meaning Sulaiman, arada alayha arshaha, and it is not urida alayha arshaha, meaning her, her throne was presented to her by an anonymous. I know this is too technical, but I'm just trying to show you the beauty of the Arabic language, the beauty of grammar, and the significance of that. And how if someone is not familiar with the Arabic grammar can easily misunderstand and uh, misinterpret and mistranslate and miscommunicate the, uh, the message. And a classic example would be Hajji. Brother Hajji does not know these subtle differences. And therefore, when he reads, he completely, he completely destroys the language and the grammar and the intended meaning, because he just doesn't have the capacity to understand all of these. And that's why, even if what he says sometimes is true, this is an individual with all due respect, you cannot take him seriously, nor can you learn to stand from him, because he's, it's not like he's just reading English content, he's reading Arabic content, without having this, the tools and the skill set that allows him to delve at that level, in that depth. You get what I'm saying? Hey, tamam. وكان عهد أبي قد خلفته في بلدها. And the last she knows about her throne is that she left it behind in her country. وقيل لا هكذا عرشك أي أنه استقر عندنا أن لك عرشا عظيما. Meaning we know that you have a great throne. فهل هو كهذا العرش الذي أحضرناه لك لك؟ Is it like that throne that we have brought for, forth to you or for you? قالت كأنه هو وهذا من ذكائها وفطنتها. This is because of how smart she was. It she said it's as if Almost, it looks to be the same, not 100%. لم تقل هو لوجود التغيير فيه والتنكير. She did not say that because of the change and the disguise that, that had applied, been applied to it. ولم تنفي أنه هو لأنها عرفت. And she didn't deny that it was her throne because she identified it. فأتت بلفظ محتمل للأمرين صادق على الحالين. So she used terminology that will entertain both meanings and that is truthful in both cases. Okay, this is very important. You get what I'm saying, guys? So here we learn that sometimes when in a situation, because lying is not allowed in Islam. However, there are situations where uh, you, can, you can use certain generic universal words or expressions that provide multiplicity of meanings without and it all of them are acceptable and you're not lying at that point this is an example she didn't say this is my throne she didn't say it is not my throne she said it's as if it's my throne as if it's similar to it it looks like it is it so in whichever whatever her intention is her words can accommodate all of the possible intentions that she may have tamam all right, guys. فقال سليمان متعجبا من هدايتها وعقلها 
وشاكرا لله ان اعطاه اعظم منها so سليمان said in amazement to how she was guided and her intelligence and also in thankfulness to Allah because Allah had given him more than he had given her واوتينا العلم من قبلها اي الهدايه والعقل والحزم من قبل هذه الملكه we have been given guidance and intelligence and firmness way before this princess this queen وكنا مسلمين وهي الهدايه النافعه الاصيه and we were muslims which is the the original orthodox beneficial genuine authentic guidance ويحتمل ان هذا من قول ملكه سبا it could be also that this is the statement attributed to the queen of Saba herself. وأوتينا العلم من ملك عن ملك سليمان وسلطانه وزيادة اقتداره من قبل هذه الحالة. Meaning we were given knowledge about the sovereignty of Solomon and his authority and his ability over us. Meaning his advantage and his superiority over us. من قبل هذه الحالة التي رأينا فيها قدرة way before we even observed and witnessed this firsthand. على إحضار العرش من المسافة البعيدة such as him bringing the throne from this مسافة البعيدة from this very far distance فأذعنا له so we uh, submitted before him وجئنا مسلمين له خاضعين لسلطانه and we came as Muslims before him in, in humiliation before his sovereignty قال الله تعالى الله عز وجل said وصدها ما كانت تعبد من دون الله أي عن الإسلام what prevented her from Islam is what she was worshipping other than Allah وإلا otherwise فلها من الذكاء والفطنة ما به تعرف تعرف الحق من الباطل. Otherwise she had enough intelligence and brightness what will allow her to differentiate the truth from the falsehood. ولكن العقائد الباطلة تذهب بصيرة القلب. الله أكبر. تذهب بصيرة القلب. However false creedal beliefs take away they take away the vision of the heart. And this is something to reflect on bismillah when you look at richard dawkins or uh, uh jordan peterson or whatever you want from the ancients from einstein and some people say einstein i like to say einstein me and my children always argue about the right pronunciation and for your record if you look it up both pronunciations are valid. You can say Einstein, you can say Einstein. Lebanese people say Einstein and I stick to that. It just sounds better on the ear. Long story short, if you look at all these intellectuals, so-called intellectuals, and they are intellectuals, to be fair, uh, you know, from way back until now, you wonder how could these people not find Islam? You know what I'm saying? Like if you're so smart, if you're really that smart, like really, how could you not have figured out that Islam is the true religion of Allah and that your salvation lies within and that, you know, you're going to go to hell and burn forever if you don't accept Islam and, you know, all that stuff, which we all understand. You know, you wonder, you wonder, shouldn't your intelligence be the first reason for you to become Muslim? And then reality strikes when you understand what people, when people choose, willingly choose to reject the truth and to adopt false beliefs, then the heart no longer sees. Meaning even though they might have the intellectual ability to analyze information, numbers, uh, uh, science, and what have you, when it comes to the heart seeing the haqq and the nur of Allah Azza wa Jal, they have no access. And Allah says, وَمَنْ لَمْ يَجْعَلِ اللَّهُ لَهُ نُورًا فَمَا لَهُ مِنْ نُورٍ And whomsoever Allah Azza wa Jal does not give any light to, whomever Allah does not give access to light, then that person shall have no light. وَمَنْ لَمْ يَجْعَلِ اللَّهُ لَهُ نُورًا فَمَا لَهُ مِنْ نُورٍ If Allah doesn't give you the light, then you will have no light. So what do we say? الحمد لله على النور الذي آتانا إياه Alhamdulillah ala nur alladhi atana iya. We praise Allah for the light that he has given us because it's not because of me and you and it's not because of your intelligence and mine and it's not because of our skills or our... No, 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 no. It is the pure gift of Allah. And that it coincided with hearts that didn't want to be arrogant. It coincided with hearts that wanted that light from Allah. When the light was given, we didn't say, no, thank you, I'm not interested. I want to enjoy my worldly life. We didn't. This is our only effort. And Allah Azza wa Jal gave us the rest. Similarly, in the ayah as quoted, 
فانها لا تعمل الابصار ولكن تعمل القلوب التي في الصدور it is not the vision that goes blind but it is the hearts that are in the chest thank you amatullah and we have many ayat to this effect about the the inaccessibility of the truth and the light if allah azza wa jalla doesn't give it to you and that people no matter how smart they are if they disdain and they turn away and they are too arrogant and prideful to submit before allah and to enslave themselves to their master then their intellect will be of no avail and it will be of no benefit and it will be an evidence against them because they were told afala taqilun do you not reason and understand and use your mind to come to those realities and to this truth subhanallah so appreciate the guidance from allah and understand that when the people turn away from the deen of allah then they're allowed to go on that path falamma falamma zaghu azagha allah qulubahum when they turned away from the deen of allah when they turned away from the truth allah caused their hearts to deviate and go astray yeah i i think everybody should just stop commenting or i, I don't know where uh, the kids i think came up with their own rule that you could comment on what i'm saying i don't think that's that's right either maybe there was maybe i mis miscommunicated the message nothing should happen on the chat except if there's no audio no video or there's a disaster then you let us know that's it no giving salam no returning salam no commenting or if i ask you a question if i say something then go ahead and barakallahu feekum feed me in and and uh, answer the question otherwise I, it's still distracting because i'm trying to read what's going on here and, and sometimes i just read bits and pieces and it throws me off because i have a terrible concentration tamam Now, إنها كانت من قوم كافرين. And I'm not trying to shut you down or be mean, guys. I know you're all intelligent and uh, you're mature enough to understand where I'm coming from, right? I'm not trying to like make you feel like you know oh, I can't do anything. No, okay, you're all grown ups. It's okay. We could we could skip that one. Inshallah, during the chat, during the Q and A session, yeah, and go all out. Let me hear it uh, as much as you want. فاستمرت على دينهم إنها كانت من قوم كافرين. She used to be of disbelieving people and she remained upon the religion. وانفراد الواحد عن أهل الدين والعادة المستمرة بأمر يراه بعقله من ضلال وخطأ من أندر ما يكون. فهذا لا يستغرب بقاؤها. فلهذا لا يستغرب بقاؤها على الكفر. Pay attention now. The person انفراد الواحد when a person individually uh, abandons the the religion of his people and the habitual customs with the, something that he sees with his mind even though he sees with his intelli intelligence and intellect their misguidance and their mistake is among the rarest things to happen right so that's why we're not surprised or shocked that she remained upon kufur because it's, it's unlikely that that happens uh in a, in a normal situation right but you know subhanallah it's not it's not common but it happens now, ثم إن سليمان أراد من سلطانه ما يبهر العقول. Then Sulaiman wanted to show an aspect of his authority and dominion that which will amaze the minds. فأمرها أن تدخل الصرح. So he commanded her to enter the palace. وهو المجلس المرتفع المتسع. And it is like a place. A majlis is a place of rest, basically, like uh, the living room, not the living room, even the bigger than the living room. A place where you basically tajlis, يعني, where you sit down and chillax. المرتفع, and it is uh, elevated, it is a little lofty, high, above the ground. متسع is vast and spacious. وكان مجلسا من قوارير. And it was, it was made from these uh, crystal. And under the crystal, there were rivers flowing beneath that. So she thought it was water, right? So there's crystal and the water is beneath it. She thought it was water. So she saw she, it, it, the, the crystal is so clear and transparent that it appears as though the water is flowing and there's nothing above the water. So the, the crystal is so clear and transparent that it's, it's not even visible. 
right? You cannot even see it. So she assumed that there was water flowing right there. وَكَشَفَتْ عَنْ سَقَيْهَا لِلْخِيَاضَةِ So then she, she uh, uh, how did they say it? Bared her legs. I don't want to use wrong terms because it's a very delicate matter and we have to be delicate in uh, the translation. So I want to use the reliable translation of the uh, people of, of, of expertise. Yeah. She bared her legs لِلْخِيَاضَةِ so that she may enter. وَهَذَا أَيْضًا مِنْ عَقْلِهَا وَأَدَبِهَا This is also a sign of her intelligence and her manners. فَإِنَّهَا لَمْ تَمْتَنِعْ مِنَ الدُّخُولِ الْمَحَلَّ الَّذِي أُمِرَتْ بِدُخُولِهِ لِعِلْمِهَا لِعِلْمِهَا أَنَّهَا لَمْ تُسْتَدَعَ إِلَى الْإِكْرَامِ You know, someone else could have said, man, you know, this water, I'm not going to go in there. She might, you know, I might hurt myself or something. So she, her matters told her, did not prevent her from entering a place uh, she was told to enter because she knew that she would only be asked to do so um, for, for her to be honored. This is means of honoring her. وَأَنَّ مُلْكَ سُلَيْمَانْ وَتَنْظِيمَهُ قَدْ بَنَاهُ عَلَى الْحِكْمَةِ And that Sulaiman's uh, kingdom and his arrangement of his kingdom is something that he's done based on wisdom. وَلَمْ يَكُنْ فِي قَلْبِهَا أَدْنَا شَكٍ مِنْ حَالَةِ سُوءِ بَعْدَ مَا رَأَتْ مَا رَأَتْ And she had no doubt, not even any aspect of bad assumption or negative uh, assumption about him after, after she had seen what she had seen. After, after when, after what, yeah, after what she had seen. Yeah. So when she was prepared now to enter, قيل لها إنه صرح ممرد أي مجلس. It was said to her, this is a majlis. من قوارير فلا حاجة منك لكشف سقن. You don't have to bare your legs. فحين إذن لما وصلت إلى سليمان. So when she arrived to Sulaiman, وشاهدت ما شاهدت, and she saw what she saw, وعلمت نبوته ورسالته, and she knew his uh, prophethood and his messengership. تابت ورجعت عن كفرها. She repented and she turned away from her disbelief. وقالت رب إني ظلمت نفسي وأسلمت مع سليمان لله رب العالمين. She said, My Lord, I have wronged my soul. Now I fully submit myself along with Sulaiman to Allah, the Lord of the worlds. فهذا ما قصه الله علينا من قصة ملكة سبأ وما جرى لها مع سليمان. This is what Allah عز وجل narrated onto us from the story of the Queen of uh, Sabah and what had happened with Sulaiman. وَمَا عَدَ ذَلِكَ مِنَ الْفُرُوعِ الْمُوَلَّدَةِ وَالْقَصَصِ الْإِسْرَائِلِيَةِ uh -huh. Whatever's besides that of branched, invented stories and uh, Israelites, all kind of stories that are attributed to Bani Israel, فَإِنَّهُ لَا يَتَعَلَّقُ بِالتَّفْسِيرِ لِكَلَامِ اللَّهِ It should not be connected with the tafsir of the speech of Allah. وَهُوَ مِنَ الْأُمُورِ الَّتِي يَقِفُ الْجَزْمُ بِهَا عَلَى الدَّلِيلِ الْمَعْلُومِ الْعَصُومِ And these are matters where you can only affirm and confirm a matter upon uh, uh, protected, authenticated evidence that is known to the people of knowledge. وَالْمَنْقُولَاتِ فِي هَذَا الْبَابِ كُلُّهَا وَأَكْثَرُهَا لَيْسَ كَذَلِكَ And what has been narrated to us in this aspect of the deen, in this chapter, uh, is uh, most of it, or uh, most of it, all of it, or most of it, are not verified by the Sunnah. Meaning, the Sheikh is saying <clears throat> we have to be careful about the sources and the resources, because you will find in the Israeliyat, which is based on biblical texts and stories and what have you, all types of details about the story that are not from the Quran, and they're not endorsed or verified through the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Therefore, you may not do the tafsir of the Book of Allah based on stories that are not verifiable فالحزم كل الحزم الاعراض عنها وعدم ادخال في التفسير والله اعلم so we have to be very firm and particular about shunning them and not inserting them into the exegesis of the book of Allah and Allah knows best طيب we have time to do Ayah 45 onwards. Tafaddal ya Shaykh. وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا إِلَىٰ ثَمُودَ أَخَاهُمْ صَالِحًا أَنْ يَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ فَإِذَا هُمْ فَرِيقَانِ يَخْتَصِمُونَ قَالَ يَا قَوْمِ لِمَ تَسْتَعْجِلُونَ بِالسَّيِّئَةِ قَبْلَ الْحَسَنَةِ لَوْلَا تَسْتَغْفِرُونَ اللَّهَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ قالوا اطيرنا بك وبمن معك 
قال طائركم عند الله بل أنتم قوم تفتنون وكان في المدينة تسعة رهط يفسدون في الأرض ولا يصلحون قالوا تقاسموا بالله لنبيتنه وأهله ثم لنقولن لوليه ما شهدنا ما شهدنا مهلك أهله ومهلك أهله وإنا لصادقون And we certainly sent to the people of Thamud their brother Saleh proclaiming worship Allah but they suddenly split into two opposing groups He urged the disbelieving group oh my people why do you seek to hasten the torment rather than grace If only you sought Allah's forgiveness so you may be shown mercy. They replied, you and your followers are a bad omen for us. He responded, your omens are destined by Allah. In fact, you are only a people being tested. And there were in the city nine elite men who spread corruption in the land, never doing what is right. They vowed, let us swear by Allah that we will take him and his family down by night. Then we will certainly say to his closest ears, we did not witness the murder of, this, of his family. We are definitely telling the truth. Or it's heirs actually. Yeah, from inheritors. Now, sorry. طيب. يخبر تعالى أنه أرسل إلى ثمود القبيلة المعروفة أخاهم في النسب صالحا. Allah tells us that he sent to Thamud, the famous known tribe, their brother uh, Salih. وأنه أمرهم أن يعبدوا الله وحدا that he commanded them to worship Allah alone ويترك الأنداد والأوثان and to abandon the rivals and the, and the idols فإذا هم فريقان يختصمون منهم المؤمن ومنهم الكافر وهم معظمهم so they were split into two groups among them are the believers and the others are the disbelievers and that was the majority that was the majority of them the majority were disbelievers قال يا قوم لما تستعجلون بالسيئة قبل الحسنة أي لما تبادرون فعل السيئات وتحرصون عليها قبل فعل الحسنات My people, why are you hastening towards doing evil deeds and you're keen on them before you do good deeds التي بها تحسن أحوالكم وتصلح أمور أموركم الدينية والدنيوية The good deeds is means for you to rectify your affairs both religious and worldly والحال أنه لا مجيب لكم إلى الذهاب لفعل سيئة and, and the reality is that there's nothing really urging you or urging you to, to do evil deeds لولا تستغفرون الله had you only sought forgiveness from Allah بأن تتوبوا من شرككم وعسيانكم that you will repent from your shirk and your disobedience وتدعون أن يغفر لكم and you supplicate that you're forgiven لعلكم ترحمون perhaps you'll be shown mercy فإن رحمة الله قريب من المحسنين Verily the mercy of Allah is close to the right the righteous and the good doers والتائب من الذنوب هو من المحسنين Whoever repents from his sins is among the محسنين قالوا لنبيهم صالح مكذبين ومعارضين They said to their prophet صالح in denial and objection اطيرنا بك وبمن معك زعموا قبحهم الله أنهم لم يروا على وجه صالح خيرا They claimed, may Allah Azza wa Jal make them ugly, that they did not see upon, uh, you know, they did not see because of Salih any good. وَأَنَّهُ هُوَ وَمَنْ مَعُوا مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ صَارُوا سَبَبًا لِمَنْعِ بَعْضِ مَطَالِبِهِمِ الدُّنْيَوِيَ And that, that Salih and whoever is with him from the believers have become a reason that is preventing them from attaining their worldly gains. فَقَالَ لَهُمْ صَالِحِ Salih said to them, طَائِرُكُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أي ما أصابكم إلا بذنوبكم whatever omen you have is with Allah meaning whatever has afflicted you is because of your sins بل أنتم قوم تفتنون بالسراء والضراء والخير والشر you are people who are being tested with good and uh, with good uh, with ease and difficulty with good and evil لينظر هل تعقلون وتتوبون أم لا so Allah will see whether you will reason and you will repent or no فَهَذَا دَأْبُهُمْ فِي تَكْذِيبِ نَبِيِّهِمْ وَمَا قَبَلُهُ بِهِ So this is, their, uh, this is their story, this is their trend, this is their pattern in belying their prophet and how they responded to him. وَكَانَ فِي الْمَدِينَةِ لَتِي فِيَا صَالِحِ And that city in which Salih was, there was الجامعة لمعظم قومي, the one that gathered most of his people, 
تسعة رهط يفسدون في الأرض ولا يصلحون أي وصفهم الإفساد في الأرض so their quality their persistent quality is corruption upon earth ولا لهم قصد ولا فعل إلا بالإصلاح and they have no interest no intent whatsoever to to do good or to rectify قد استعدوا لمعادات صالح والطعن في دينه ودعوة قوم إلى ذلك they were prepared and ready to uh, to dis and to uh, uh, speak ill and to show enmity to Salih and to also criticize his religion and his invitation of his people to that. كما قال تعالى فاتقوا الله وأطيعون In another ayah Allah tells us he said fear Allah and obey me ولا تطيعوا أمر المسرفين Do not obey the command of the uh, exaggerators الذين يفسدون في الأرض ولا يصلحون Those who spread corruption upon earth and they do not do any good or they do not rectify. فلم يزالوا بهذه الحالة الشنيعة حتى أنهم من عداوتهم. They remain in this uh, uh, abhorrent condition. So much so that because of their enmity تقاسموا فيما بينهم كل واحد أقصى من الآخر. Each one made an oath to the other. لنبينت لنبيتنه وأهله أي لنأتينهم ليلا هو أهله. We will go at night to him and his family. فلنقتلنهم and we will kill them. ثم لنقولن لولي then we will say to his uh, closest family إذا قام علينا ودعا علينا أن نقتلهم if somebody were to come and say hey and accuse us of killing them ننكر ذلك وننفيه ونحلف we will uh, deny that and we will make an oath and swear that we had nothing to do with this if we didn't kill him وإن الله صادقون and we are indeed among the truthful one uh, آية number 50 sir ومكروا مكرا ومكرنا مكرا وهم لا يشعرون فانظر كيف كان عاقبة مكرهم أنا دمرناهم وقومهم أجمعين فتلك بيوتهم خاوية, خاوية بما ظلموا إن في ذلك لآية لقوم يعلمون وأنجينا الذين آمنوا وكانوا يتقون شكراً And so they made a plan but we too made a plan while they were unaware See then what the consequences of the plane were We utterly destroyed them and their people all together So their homes are there but completely ruined because of their wrongdoing Surely and this is a lesson for people of knowledge and we delivered those who were faithful and were mindful of Allah. فتواطوا على ذلك ومكروا مكرا دبروا أمرهم على قتل صالح وآهله على وجه الخفية حتى من قومهم خوفا من أوليائه. So they plotted this plot which is to kill Salih and his family so much so that they were discreet about this even from their own tribe because they were afraid of, of, of the allies, of uh, Salih's allies. وَمَكَرْنَا مَكْرًا بِنَصْرِ نَبِيِّنَا صَالِحِ عَلَيْهِ السلام. Allah Azza wa Jalla's plot was to aid and grant victory to his Prophet Salih وَتَيْسِيرِ أَمْرِي and to facilitate his affair وَأَهْلَاكِ قَوْمِهِ الْمُكَذِّبِينَ for Allah to destroy his belying people You see? So humans are plotting and Allah's plot cannot be overcome Anytime the people plot against Allah they will lose the plot and the victorious forever would be Allah. Always. Inna lanansuru rusulana. Allah says we will grant victory to our messengers. And in multiple ayat, Allah tells us that he is the one. وَمَنْ نَصْرُ إِلَّا مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ And victory does not come except from Allah. So if Allah, if you are on the side of Allah's deen, then you are the victorious one. If you are on the side of Allah's deen, then you will prevail. If Allah grants you victory, then no one can take it away, no matter what plots and planning the people uh, uh, devise against you. It's not going to happen. It's not going to fly. So that's why we should always make that proper choice of choosing what is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what is in line with the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in spite of our mistakes and shortcomings. In terms of our credo and uh, uh, our uh, you, submission should be to the deen of Allah given a precedence over everything and every ideology and every group and every speaker and every everything 
Because when Allah is, is going to give you victory, who can stop it? Look at what happened. They couldn't even feel or perceive and even know what's going on. فَانْظُرْ كَيْفَ كَانَ عَقِبَةُ مَكْرِ مَا الْحَصَلَ مَقْصُودُهُمْ Did they attain their objective? وَأَدْرَكُوا بِذَلِكَ الْمَكْرَ مَطْلُوبَهُمْ Did they acquire what they were seeking with their plot? أَمَنْ تَقَضَ عَلَيْهِمْ الْأَمْرُ Or was the matter flipped against them? وَلِيَاذَا قَالْ أَنَّا دَمَّرْنَاهُمْ وَقَوْمُ أَجْمَعِينَ We destroyed them and their people, all of them. أَهْلَكْنَاهُمْ وَاسْتَأْصَلْنَاهُمْ We destroyed them and we eradicated them. وَاسْتَأْصَلْنَا شَأْفَتَهُمْ We eradicated them. فَجَأَتُمْ صَيْحَةُ عَذَابٍ فَأُهْلِكُ عَنْ أَخِرِينَ So the scream of punishment were sent upon them and they were destroyed until the last one. فَتِلْكَ بُيُوتُمْ خَاوِيَةٌ So these are their homes completely ruined. قَدْ تَهَدَّمَ جُدْرَانُهَا عَلَى سُقُوفِهَا Its walls have been destroyed upon its rooftops. وَأَوْحَشَتْ مِنْ سَاكِنِهَا And it's left alone from its inhabitants. وَعُطِّلَتْ عَنَّا مِنْ نَازِلِيهَا And there's no more. It's been denied from its inhabitants. بِمَا ظَلَمُوا Because of their wrongdoing. أَيْ هَذَا عَاقِبَةُ ظُلْمِهِمْ وَشِرْكِهِمْ بِاللَّهِ وَبَغِهِمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ This is the outcome and the consequence of their oppression and their shirk in Allah and their transgression on earth. إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَةً لِقَوْمٍ يَعْلَمُونَ الْحَقَائِقِ There's an ayah, there's a sign, a lesson for people that know the truth. وَيَتَدَبَّرُونَ وَقَائِعَ اللَّهِ فِي أَوْلَيَا وَعَدَائِهِ فِي أَوْلِيَائِهِ وَعَدَائِهِ And they, they reflect on what Allah has, uh, uh, you know, uh, what Allah Azza wa Jal has uh, afflicted with the enemies of Allah and what he's granted to his awliya, to his, uh, those who are uh, allies of Allah and friends of Allah. فَيَعْتَبِرُونَ بِذَلِكَ So they reflect upon that. They take a lesson from that. They find the moral, the mor morality behind that. وَيَعْلَمُونَ أَنَّ عَاقِبَةَ الظُّلْمَ الدَّمَارُ وَالْهَلَكَ And they know that the consequence and the outcome and the ramification of oppression is destruction and annihilation. وَأَنَّ عَاقِبَةَ الْإِيمَانَ وَالْعَدِلْ النَّجَاتُ وَالْفَوْزِ And that the consequence of iman and justice is that you will be given uh, safety and victory. وَلِيَاذَا قَالْ وَأَنْجَيْنَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَكَانُوا يَتَّقُونَ أَيْ أَنْجَيْنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ بِاللَّهِ So we saved those who believed on Allah. وَمَلَائِكَتِي and his angels. وَكُتُبِي and his scriptures. وَرُسُولِي and his messengers. وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ and the last day. وَالْقَدَرِ خَيْرِ وَشَرِ and those who believe in the قَدَر. the good and the bad. وَكَانُوا يَتَّقُونَ الشِّرْكَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْمَعَاصِي and they used to stay away and avoid shirk and sins. وَيَعْمَلُونَ بِطَاعَتِي وَطَاعَتِ الرُّسُلِ and they worked and they strove in obeying Allah and obeying the messengers of Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa taala make us among them. And what a perfect timing to end the class just around the two fifteen mark. And also before we begin the discussion of the people of Lut, once again, since we are in the uh, the rainbow uh, season, uh, huh? LGTV. وخرعني هذول الله يهديهم يصلحهم المجا خلنا ساكتين الحين نتكلم بعدين يلا طيب بسم الله next week إن شاء الله we'll continue. Stop sharing. Oh, look, I brought the screen here. Yay. Oh, never mind. It didn't go. Never mind. It did. Okay. What's going on? You wilded. Wait, my screen is loading. That's why we didn't use this laptop before. Uh, I hope you are well. I recently stumbled upon the channel of Brother Muhammad bin Shamsuddin and I found it beneficial because I'm trying to improve my Arabic. I do not indulge into continued. To his advanced reputation, is there anything I should watch out for? I only see him standing for the... I have no idea who he is, brother. I have no idea who he is. Oh, it could be that brother who refuted Muhammad Hijab. Yeah, I don't know about him either. I only saw that one video where he refuted Muhammad Hijab. Uh, there are so many sects and groups in Islam. Each one claims to be upon the truth following the Quran and Sunnah. How to know which one is correct path? I'm so confused. Any advice? Yeah, Khalid Mil Walid, Allah Yahdiq. You've been listening to me for how long? You really still don't know? Hi, ah, Baba. There's, uh, what do you mean? The Salafiya. Salafi. The way of the Salaf. I've given uh, my entire da'wah is based on this. <laughs> what do you mean you don't know? Come on, man. Next. Here, Eid will be on Sunday. One to fast. 
Friday and Saturday. You fast on the day of Arafah, the day before Eid, ya Sheikh. The day of Arafah is the day before Eid. Yawm al Some said Queen Saba has big fur in her legs. It was proved wrong from that water incident. Is this true? No. We just said, we just finished telling you that all of these crazy uh, Israelite stories that are not based on the Sunnah, Khali Wali. What big fur in her legs, man? Next. <laughs> Yo, he just said it was proven that big fur in her legs. <laughs> what? What just happened? Yo. Yo, you should be banned from the channel for this comment right there. La Sheikh. Right. How uh, should we Muslims prefer to offer the daily five five times for Salah and congregation in Ahli Hadith Salafi mosques? I guess if that's what you want to call them. I don't like the term Ahli Hadith uh, because some of them have taken that term and turned it into a sect in and of its own. But yeah, generally Ahli Hadith are Salafis, they're Atharis, and they're, they should be upon the right path minus some exaggerations they have in, in warning against their fellow Salafis. But they, you know that's old stories. Everybody knows that. Next. Have you seen the latest blunder made by Muhammad Hijab? Also, can we say that every philosopher has some doubts in his word regarding his Lord? Uh, uh, of course, I've seen the latest blunder from Muhammad Hijab. Muhammad Hijab, at this point, uh, is uh, he suffers from the Yasir Qadi uh, illnesses and syndrome. And that's what he gets for, for connecting and, and collaborating with Yasir Qadi and for uh, saying that he has more degrees than a thermometer and for praising him and giving him a platform. All of the diseases that Yasir Qadi has now have afflicted our brother Muhammad Hijab. Uh, Self-amazement, um, thinking that he's the uh, above above all. He hasn't left anyone he didn't criticize. All the mashayikh, all, uh, the, uh, the salaf, even criticizing the Quran and the Sunnah, criticizing everything, even our belief system has become a source of mockery. A person that is so amazed with himself where any question you give him, it turns into a, a long, uh, endless explanation of display of knowledge and how much he knows and how much he's memorized. It's just sad. And the arrogance is, is overcome, has overcome this individual. May Allah Azza wa Jal guide him. Because those blunders are, are, are very serious blunders. They're inexcusable blunders. Okay, you don't want, you know, if you're going to criticize... Uh, Salafis all the time then claim to be an Athari, quote unquote. You're not an Athari in any way, shape, or form. Everything you do is, is based on philosophy. No Athari entertains philosophy, not at that level at least. If, if there were to be some, some uh, Salafis who had some uh, yani philosophical uh, 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 elements within them, they were still problematic. But the level of philosophy that Muhammad Hijab engages in is, is beyond Ash'aris. Then you turn around and call yourself Athari. That's just bluffing the people, man. And which ath Athari behaves like this? Which Athari behaves like this? Making fun of the sifat of Allah Azza wa Jal and making fun of the people that are teaching the sifat of Allah. A'udhu Billah. A'udhu Billah min al-khidlan wa min al-fashal. But you know, people get big-headed, man. When you're a nobody and then the people make you a somebody and then you become bigger than... Then you ever anticipated, خلاص, until you lose it. Like Yasir Qadi. Listen to Yasir Qadi. I was the first student in the history of the world. And I was the first one to get a degree. And the first one to get a master's degree. And I was there before uh, Aristotle. I gave Aristotle his first lesson. He was a little student under me. And then I told him to go get me some water while he was gone. I had some tea. And now I realize that the Athari is not like the Salafi because... Honestly, who's Muhammad Abdul Wahab? Blah, 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 blah. Oh, Shaykh, Shaykh, go and sleep. You're the one who gave me. Leave me alone, Shaykh. He doesn't even know how to say Bayhaqi. You listen to him. Yes, the Qadi does not even know how to say Bayhaqi. He says Bayhaqi, Bayhaqi, Bayhaqi. There's no Imam Bayhaqi in Islam. Yeah, Shaykh can't even differentiate between the Ha and the Ha. Leave me alone, Shaykh. Allah will forgive you. You and your library chats. Call him library uh, uh, fitna. Aslan. Every day you run your mouth for hours about what you know and what you don't know. And Muhammad Hijab is basically following the footsteps of Yasir Qadi. And any person who turns away from the Quran and the Sunnah and looks down upon them and sees himself bigger than them is bound to be misguided and misguide those who follow them. 
We seek refuge with Allah from following the footsteps of these losers. That's the, the, the best way I can put it. Next. Since Hajj is not uh, 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 obligated upon those who have debt, would student loans count? Not that I took one, but they're curious because student, students also are haram. It doesn't matter. If you are in debt, you have to pay them off before you perform Hajj. It's a priority to pay off debt before you perform Hajj. Now. Yalla, ya jama'at al khair. Do, to what extent do we believe in sincere in science? For example, the rotation of the earth and moon landing and the universe altogether. And can we listen to people like Neil Degress for science purposes? I don't know who Neil is. And uh, you believe in science uh, so far as it uh, it agrees with uh, the Quran and the Sunnah. If it agrees with the Quran and the Sunnah. Ahlan wa sahlan science. Any science. Any science. Even if they, they were to make multiple oaths that it is real. It is, it is a, a scientific fact. If it contradicts the Quran and the Sunnah, flush it down the toilet. Flush it down the toilet. End of story. Now. واحد عايز يتجوز بنت عمته عشان شايفها ممتازة من كل النواحي يا سلام عليك يا ممتازة من كل النواحي الله عليك يا محمود انت بتشوف ازاي يا بابا انت قاعد تعمل ايه اصلا من كل النواحي ممتازة بس امه متخانقة مع عائلة ابوه مش سمحال يتجوز منهم يعمل ايه يسيب البنت ويسمع كلام امه اللي بعده Are there four rak'ah sunnah before and after Jumu'ah? And what is the ruling on sending salatations upon the Prophet ﷺ after Jumu'ah specifically? Okay, well, it's a sunnah to send salah upon the Prophet ﷺ the entirety of the night and day of Jumu'ah. So doing it after the Jumu'ah specifically, what's your evidence for that? You have the whole, you know, 24 hours to do it. Four rak'ah sunnah before and after Jumu'ah. As far as I know, there are no four rak'at before Jumu'ah. There are two rak'at if you pray at home and four rak'at if you pray in the masjid after Jumu'ah. Now, yalla. Wa alaikum salam, Mr. Adele. I want to start a company without taking a loan. Is it allowed to start a Kickstarter, GoFundMe, or is it tricky or haram? Wallah, I don't know, Habibi. I don't know. I don't know. Next. Yalla, jama'at al khair. Is it correct that the beginner student of knowledge should not read scholars' book like a sharh al mumti or sharh al tahawiya and wasitiya on their own? Yeah. Yes, correct. You might misunderstand and get confused and confuse others accordingly. Yalla, hujjaj. Allah is above the throne and outside his creation. I'm confused on this. Ibn Abbas said the kursi is the place of the fear of Allah and the size of the throne cannot be known. Yeah, akhi, uh, blue blanket. Rule number one, we do not delve into the howness of the names and attributes of Allah. We do not delve into the howness. It, it, Allah did not require of you or me or anyone to think about those matters in this manner. All we know is that Allah Azza wa Jal is above the throne. And according to Ibn Abbas, Al-Kursi, Mawdi'u Qadamayi Rabb Azza wa Jal, the Kursi is a place of that we don't have any imagination or any further details, and we don't need to know about it either. It's not going to get your iman stronger. It's not going to make you have more khushu' and your salah. It does not concern you. Whatever we have from the Quran and Sunnah, we accept them face value. We don't do ta'til. We don't deny the meaning. We don't do tashbih. We don't liken Allah to his creation. We don't do taqif saying this is how or that is how. None of our business. Accept it and keep moving. Hey, Next. Allah. Is my profile picture haram? I didn't edit it. Is it permissible to keep it? It's a lion wearing a shemag and a igal. I do see, Baba. I don't know. Somebody told you that I'm blind. Wallahi, Captain, yani. Um, 
uh, I don't know what you mean by haram because it's drawn. It's digital. A lot of the scholars will say because it's digital, it's fine. Some of them will say it's not. But I'm of the opinion that it's fine, inshallah. Now, Where's Pedro's question? He's complaining. If we break wind during salah, should we wash the main street to purify ourselves? No, wash the alley next door. Hey, it's your main street, yeah, boy. What is the main street? I mean, what kind of lingo is this? Yeah, jingy bingy. A lingo that even I don't know. If we break wind during the salah, you want to wash the main street? Like you're... What is the... Well, why would that be the main street in the first place? If you make wudu, if you fart, let me just be very explicit here. If you fart during salah, you just go make wudu without washing anything. You just fart it, unless your farts are juicy. If you have some nasty fart that, uh, what they call it, another name, <laughs> because it's a combination of a fart and something else, then that's, that's your problem. You, then you got to see a doctor and avoid farting altogether, please, because that's just nasty. Man, come on. We haven't even had lunch, man. Is it okay to watch WWE? Of course not. No, how could you watch WWE? When was the last time you saw people in WWE dressed even, even remotely decently? Whether men or women, they're all wearing tights and spandex and... They're disgusting, filthy people that are constantly, that are the closest thing to the juicy fart that your friend asked about earlier. That's WWE quality right there. Okay? Khali Wali. Can you demonstrate how to takbir on Eid? Yeah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Walillahi alhamd. That's what I know. That's what I know. I don't know of anyone saying... Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illa Allah, Allahu Akbar. Yani, where did this come from? This tone and this delivery and this song and this, to this whatever you want to call it, this symphony. Where did it come from? From who? How? Why? I don't know. You're supposed to do dhikr of Allah. You're not, you're not, you're not uh, Al Pacino. Al Pacino doesn't sing Ya Ta'ban. The other guy, whatever his name is. Al Muhim. La yakhi. That's how I know Takbir. If anyone has an opinion other than that, please bring the evidence. In Masjid, dear people, drugs are learned. Yeah, I know. I know. I don't understand. I know when I go to the Masjid and when I'm involved in this, I don't, I don't follow the people around me. I don't pay attention to them. I don't care about them. I just simply say, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allah, Bas. Yalla, next. Dr. Sarsour. Raytu, raytu, yarbish ala rasak Sarsour, yifud bidaintak alamin yitla amin shmail. Hada asbu Dr. Sarsour ule. Ustad, to what extent do we believe in science, for example, in rotation on the earth? Khalas, we did this already. We did this, ya hujjaj, bait Allah al-haram. We're done with this Ibn Matuta and the same question. There are people complaining the questions are not being posted. You're, showing, you're, 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 you're posting the same questions again. Okay, here we go. If one has a dream where there are bad parts and also good parts, is it allowed to tell people about the good part but I mention nothing about the other portion? I don't know. I don't know. Fufuz, I'm waiting for the one day where you ask an, a simple, simple, easy question. It's like you find the questions from, I don't know, where you go search for, you, what do you type on Google? Most difficult questions on earth. And then you get it and then you share it with me. Help me, help you, help me, help you. Billah alayk, dini su'al zayi nas. Jannantani. Yalla, next. Where's my Aspen? Right here. Finally, Pedro. If I have an injury on my leg and it will get worse if I pray while standing, go to the Masjid of Jum'ah. Am I excused from these two? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. You're excused. Stop crying, Fufus. Grow up. Please suggest me a phone. iPhone budget. What do you mean iPhone budget? Meaning you have the budget to buy an iPhone, but you want a phone from Samsung? That better be your question, Amatullah, because if you, out of everybody, if you don't know, then I'm just, I might just shut down this whole uh, business and, and go open a falafel shop. I recommend if you have money like that, if you got money for an iPhone, get the S22 Ultra 
or get the Z Fold 3. But if you're a lady, I can also recommend the Z Flip 3. Or you could wait because a new generation of the foldable devices will be uh, announced uh, the 10th of August, inshallah. And then maybe you want to wait and get one of those new phones. Khalas? Or if you want something cheaper, you can go for the A73. Thank you. Yalla, Hujjaj. Yalla, andana ayan rabbiha. Yalla, ya baba. Yalla, sara'atni. I'm wondering if the game among us is halal. The game is about lying and being sus and backstabbing and wondering. Does Allah permit being a sussy baka? <laughs> no. I've never thought of the game like this, by the way. I tried to play it once or twice. I thought it was the dumbest game on planet Earth, and I quit. But now that I'm thinking about it, yeah, you are right. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of haram involved in this game, and therefore it should be haram as well. Bravo, Fakusman. I heard a da'i saying, time heals trauma. Without, men without mentioning the fact that Allah is a shafi and shifa comes only from him. Is this not a statement of shirk? Not necessarily. Context plays a difference. Context plays a difference. No, that is not a statement of shirk because he's obviously, is not denying the fact that Allah Azza wa Jal heals it, but it takes time. I, I, I think the context will help us figure out where this person is coming from. Now, Yalla, Sheikh. In my city, majority of the masjids combine Maghrib and Isha because of how late Isha is. What is your view on this? Um, if if you have scholars in your community and they've come to that decision, that might be acceptable. That might be acceptable because if they know that Isha is so late that no one will come to Isha, then they're better off combining them so that the people can attend the jama'ah. Tamam? No. But you need a scholar in your locality to issue that fatwa, not just the average Abdullah over there. Next. Yalla. I woke up for Fajr with one hour left. And I purposely kept lying down with the intention to get up in five minutes. Then I fell asleep and missed Fajr. That occurs often. Am I sinful? Yes, absolutely sinful. Absolutely sinful. 100% no doubt you're sinful. Get up, yakhi. You, we, you already know, and I already know, when you say, oh, there's two more minutes, they become two more hours. You already know. We all know. Khalas, you got up, got up, ya sheikh. And yes, you could be flirting with kufr, according to some opinion. That's why. Stop and get up. Yalla. Where is it? The AC remote. Turn it off, please. Oh, finally. Next. What is the ruling on this dua that people make at weddings to make the couple like Sulaiman and Bilqis? Oh, Balqis. Bilqis. And they also mentioned it doesn't cover the story. No, what is this dua? What is this dua? And do we have evidence that Sulaiman married uh, Balqis in the first place? What's the evidence that uh, Sulaiman married Balqis for the for them the, to make this dua? The dua is you say barakallahu lak uh, wa baraka alayk wa jama'a baynakuma bi khair. Wa khlasna. La tatfalsafu wa tikhtaru li kul wahid yitla' li bi dua jadid wa may you be like Sulaiman and uh, Balqis wa may you be like this and that. Khalas ya baba. Bikaffi kida wallah. زهقتونا من الكلام الفاضي والبياخه كل واحد مصطدم حاله انا ابي اخو واحد بالعالم بس انه انا مشي حالك يعني اقعد قدامي مايكروفون وبيجوز الكبير السن الختيار انه يكون بايخ اما انتم لشو هالبياخه بعمركم 15 و20 سنه اللي بعده uh, are the ghuraf in firdaus or the entire upper half of jannah what are the Ghuraf in Firdaus in the entire upper half of Jannah? Yeah, Firdaus is uh, is the highest place in Jannah. That's all I know. 
I mean, the question is not very clear. Yeah, Jao Hauk. Why go bald, bro? Because I like it. Why do you have hair? Why do you keep hair? Why is your hair seven centimeters or six centimeters or five centimeters? Why? Why is your hair this? Why? It's, it's, your, it's your choice. Well, whatever you're comfortable with. I'm comfortable with being bald, Habibi. I'm the one who has to deal with shaving, not you. And I, I do the hard work and you're the one who gets tired. I do the hard work. You get tired. Let me do the hard work. Let me get tired. I will get tired on my own. And to enjoy your hair. And who cares? Anyways, next. Are there four rakats with your uh, uh, hujjaj? Khalas, ya baba, you're posting the same question 18 times. What to do if my parents force me to go study a subject to the non-mahram tutor because that's the only tutor available? You don't listen. You do not obey your parents in disobeying Allah. You do not obey your parents and then disobey Allah. Sheikh, should we memorize? Sheikh, where is the Sheikh? Ya Sheikh, ta'al ya Sheikh. Should we memorize Bukhari first or Bulugh al-Maram? Why do scholars suggest Bulugh al-Maram first? Because Bulugh al-Maram gives you the basics and just, Bukhari is a, is a humongous book with so many ahadith. So you begin with the uh, with the cigar before you go to the kibar. You begin with the small before you go to the bigger one. So that's why. And Bulugh al-Maram teaches you the fundamentals and the understanding of certain ahadith as opposed to going into the large collection of uh, Imam Bukhari. Yalla. We're way over the budget, guys. Huh? We've been doing a Q&A for 20 minutes. I'm going to act like y'all don't know. 99 people, mashallah. Where were you during the tafsir class, yeah, 99 people? Yeah, 99 people. Where were you during the tafsir class? Can we benefit from Sheikh Yahya Al-Hajuri? From what I know, yes, you can benefit from him. Can you explain what is needed? For a man to be ready to marry, I see many people wanting to get married at like 13, 14, which is fine. But nowadays, there aren't men like before. Well, if a man is able to maintain a family, if a young man is able to maintain a family financially, whether he's 13 or 14 or 20, it doesn't matter. He can go ahead and get married. The reality is most 13 or 14 year old today, 13 or 14 year olds, the most they can do is play Fortnite and drive a bicycle. And ask their parents for ice cream. Can I get this ice cream? Ah, even older than that. Whereas back in the day, a 13 or 14 year old was fighting in the cause of Allah. And, you know, conquering uh, uh, lands and handling business. They were men. So today's uh, quality of men is, is ta'ban quality. And if you're, if you're in that category of, of people, then you're not entitled. And you're not ready to get married. All right? Now. There are exceptions to the rule. I hope you are one of them, Bismillah. What would you recommend to a sister who's getting married for her to choose a mahar that isn't too much for the brother? Was asking her brother how much he makes. Uh, and, uh, without asking her brother how much he makes. Sister in Islam, uh, please check my lecture, Where is this wedding heading? Check the lecture, Where is this wedding heading? Uh, because there I've explained exactly the sunnah of the Prophet in terms of the value of the mahar, which is equal to a very small amount today. If you want to be upon the sunnah, then you can get it from that particular lecture. Now, check the lecture where is this wedding heading. And by the way, the AC is in LG because when we moved into this place, it was already there. Not that I bought an LG AC. Thank you very much. And you, whoever typed this, should have clarified that to the audience because that shows a lack of loyalty to my company, Samsung. Thank you. Now, my company is in, uh, I own it, but you know. Now, next. I'm sick, not contagious, but suffer from headaches, especially in Rukur and Sujood. It hurts a lot sometimes. Do I still have to attend the masjid? I also have issues walking at times and struggling to eat. Look, uh, the, the bottom line is if you're, if you're sick, and you're, uh, and you go into the masjid or praying, for example, standing, is going to, uh, Make it worse, then you're excused. You can, you know better than I do. I don't know what what entails, what this entails. If those matters, if going to the masjid, praying in jama'ah, or having to do ruku' and sujood the, the standard way, are going to worsen your health condition, then you don't have to do it. 
and you could pray uh, while sitting and make ruku' by just, you know, doing an ima' of the ruku' and an ima' of the sujood. It's like a gesture of both and you don't have to walk to the masjid and so on and so forth. If you're able to handle it, then go ahead and do what you got to do. Now, okay, we'll take the last couple of questions. Or we'll stop at 2.45, inshallah. When do we join prayers? Do we give iqama two times? You join prayers when there's a need for, for doing so. Usually it is when it's raining, when there's fear, um, or if there's a, a valid reason of you traveling and so on and so forth. And yes, you give two iqama. Iqama for the first salah, then iqama for the next salah. No. Next. Can my wife who wears niqab not cover in front of her foster brother who has reached the age of 14? Barakallah feek. Foster brother? Yeah, but uh, adopted according to... He's not. It's not not a Muslim, right? Like foster, as in he's adopted. He's not from. He's not really her brother. Of course, she cannot. Uh, uh, she cannot show herself in front of him. Next. Some Muslims sadly that how could music be haram when the Prophet ﷺ said that one of the Sahaba has a beautiful voice as David's flute. How to answer this shubuhat? By watching my lecture, where uh, where is the sweating heading? By watching my lecture, the classical hit, it's bad. The classical hit, it's bad. There, inshallah, it's proven beyond a shadow of doubt that music and singing are haram. So somebody to take this mutashabih uh, statement. Uh, and uh, by the way, mizmar doesn't mean flute necessarily in Islam. Mizmar is in reference to the voice of Dawood alayhi salam. So that translation is off. And the lecturer will break it down for you neatly, inshallah. Shukran. Ajin. Your name is Ajin. Mumkin sawina khubuz. Next. I live in England. All right. Qurbani will be done in Pakistan. Beautiful. Five brothers will pay apart. Do we all have to refrain from trimming, cutting the hair and nails? Whoa! Hello, hello, Yazi Amin. Five people on one Qurbani, one sheep or goat, one sheep. Because either you have one seventh of a cow or a camel, huh? Or if it's just a Qurbani, you mean a, a, a sheep, then, uh, then you can't have five people uh, participate. It has to be one individual. That's not even acceptable or valid. Come on now. Check Islam QA for the details about Qurbani, bro. Yalla, next. Yalla, yalla, ya jama'a, yalla. There's still a lot of questions. Is dua in congregation for a sick Muslim okay? If it's, if yes, if it's something that is done, yani, uh, because of a context, because of a reason, occasionally, yeah, no problem. There's someone sick, make dua in congregation, no problem. There's evidence that when Musa was making dua, uh, Allah Azza wa Jal said, Allah said that your both of your dua has been accepted. The scholars say because it's Musa who's making the dua and Harun who's saying Ameen. Now, yell. Sometimes our minds go blank during studying. We can't focus or understand properly anymore. Should we just stop? Yeah, yeah you could stop. I mean, but you, I mean, you want to stop studying altogether and fail in life? That's that's on you. Or you mean stop momentarily, go have a snack or go, you know, do something, distract yourself and go back. I don't know. That's that's a, that's an academic question. When my mind goes blank, I unblank it and continue working. Or I just remove the blanket. Next. <laughs> struggling to get married. Can you give advice? Yes. Stop struggling. Marriage is risk. It's provision. Allah will have, uh, Allah has it written for you. It will come when the time is right. Your job is to keep searching. If it comes, alhamdulillah. If it doesn't come, alhamdulillah. Don't, don't overstress it. Don't overthink it. Yeah, I know I'm a savage. Can we listen to Shamsi from DUS Dawah? Shamsi is generally okay. 
I might disagree with Shamsi on some stances um, where he has the uh, Spub's blueprint and Spub's illness, but he's more moderate and respectful than than others. Generally, he's okay, inshallah. Please don't laugh. Serious. When you say that, I'm automatically laughing. My, this is the problem. You're asking the wrong guy. You want a serious person, go ask, ask Sheikh Abdurrahman Hassan. You ask Sheikh Abdurrahman Hassan, he's going to take everything seriously. He's an ideal uh, uh, Muslim. Me, I'm a different character. Don't tell me don't laugh. Don't, don't, don't put these conditions. If you're going to ask me a, a silly question, a funny question, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to laugh. Huh? I've warned you. But I have severe addiction to lowly hentai and can't stop watching. Is hentai really haram as his drawings only? Can we know? Can How can we know it is female? Okay, if it, I don't know who lowly is, but it sounds, all, from what I've seen, all hentai is some, it's like soft pornography. Hentai is meant to be seductive. They always make them to be, you know, extra cute characters. And without knowing who Loli is, particularly hentai in general is haram. It's haram. It's a doorway to more haram, by the way. Yani if that what you're watching right now is not haram, it is going to lead you to haram inevitably. So yes, you cannot watch it. Not because just the drawing, just because the, the whole thing is made by a bunch of disbelievers who are who have you know wild sexual fantasies and sometimes that's how they demonstrate them and materialize them now do you think if we're buying a lower end phone than a chinese phone would be better than the low end samsung no way out no way on earth no way on earth man look at look let's keep it real this will be the last question inshallah keep it real look at samsung's uh, track record and history and look at these chinese brands those chinese brands they come and go they're on a constant roller coaster. One day it's Huawei. Next day you know, hey, Huawei. <laughs> bye bye Huawei. Then Oppo, up, 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 ya Sheikh. Tell el Oppo. Allah, 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 rahel Oppo. Show me. I will show you later. I cannot show you now. I will show me. Show me. Shower me. Shower yourself. Allah, khrabetak. Tala arihtak. Asa nanta. I will. Vivo, Vivo, come here, Vivo. Come. What are these stupid names in the first place? Look, even the names of these Chinese brands are are hilarious. They can even come up with a decent name of a, and then they suddenly they're all over the place, and the next thing you know, they're gone. They're gone out of the business. Samsung has been the giant Godzilla, the giant Godzilla. Stomping with his feet, boof, ba, boof, ba, just smashing competitors who come and go, come and go, come and go. iPhone, oh, iPhone, oh, iPhone. Half of the components are from Samsung, man. They buy their phone from Samsung. And the only company that can compete, Khalas Habibi, Chinese brand. The, 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 you could buy the Chinese brand, the next day they're gone. Out of the whole business. And then you are you have to deal with the consequences of choo choosing one of these lousy companies. And you have no idea how many times they've offered me to work for them. All of these brands, most of them have offered me to work for them and paid me more. They paid me a higher salary. They offered me a higher salary than my existing salary. But I know this business, alhamdulillah, and I'm telling you, Samsung is the way to go, baby. Don't deprive yourself. Shukran, Jazeeland, Ya Habibatu, Galbati, and well, you could still have a, a, a Xiaomi Pedro, but I feel sorry for you, my brother. I love you, but I feel sorry for you, and you will might regret this uh, this decision eventually. I hope you don't. I hope you don't. Hope the next phone will be a Samsung phone if you know what's best for you. Enough said. See you tomorrow in Aqida class. Zakum lau khairan. Subhanakallah, Muhammadik. Shadu Allah ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka tu blaik. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa